Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. What I wanna to talk to you guys today about are the three major key components that you're gonna to have to figure out to make your off-grid cabin a success. And number one is producing electricity. What are you going to be using for that? Are you gonna be using solar? Are you gonna be using wind or generator or possibly even hydro? Speaking of water, that brings me to number two, which is how are you going to get water to your cabin? Are you gonna be collecting rainwater in some sort of a cistern? Are you gonna be bringing in water in jugs from another location? Do you have a spring on your property? And number three, which probably should be number two now that I think about it, is waste management. What type of system are you gonna be installing to get rid of the waste? Because you're gonna be bringing it in. What are you gonna be using to get rid of it on your property? So make sure you stay tuned to our future videos because I am going to be explaining how we're gonna be producing power here at our off-grid cabin, as well as how we're gonna be pulling in water to the cabin. Today, what I wanna to talk to you guys about is number three. What did we do at our off-grid cabin to get rid of waste? So let's begin. Some Jerry cut himself. PV, let PVC pipe just hit little him old, on the head. Little old C PVC. So, but it gashed him pretty good and he's bleeding pretty good. I don't know if band aid is really going to do much for you. Well, you got that thing ready to go. Oh no, I didn't tear that. Let me tear that. Run for all those wrinkles on my face with that stuff. <laughs> Better trail than the most deer I've shot. <laughs> <laughs> Got a blood trail. He was uh, gushing. Hit a gusher. So what we're doing now is we are putting the plumbing in for the toilet. Gonna run some PVC pipe from our toilet, which is over there where Jerry's at, to our hole in the ground right over there. And then our septic is just right outside this wall. So early on in the process of us planning to build our off-grid cabin, waste management was a big concern for Lane and I. We were trying to find viable solutions for us that would fit our needs and wants as well as would fit our guests' needs and wants. Because if you've been following this build for a little bit, you might know, but this cabin will be a short-term rental like on Airbnb or VRBO. So I wanted people to have an enjoyable experience while they were here at our cabin. That was one of the main concerns for us was we are a family of six. We're also gonna have guests. So what can we use here at the cabin that would please us as well as please people? So I'm gonna give you three different options that was considered. So let's start with number one, and that's just your old fashioned outhouse. You know, this cabin, we have really tried to keep it authentic. We've tried to keep it old fashioned. We've tried to use a lot of material that was recyclable material. And so I was trying to go with the same theme of let's keep it authentic. You know, this is an off-grid cabin. Let's have an off-grid true experience and let's just have an outhouse. But the more Lane and I talked about it, we realized that that's not going to suit our family needs very well. We have four small children who constantly go to the bathroom. That's just not for us. That's not something we really wanted to do. So an outhouse was out pretty quickly. The number two option, which was really highly debatable between Lane and I, was using a composting toilet. We are familiar with composting toilets. We do not have one, but we are aware of them and familiar with them because of the RV industry. We know a lot of people who love to boondock like us who have a composting toilet in their RV. And we have been considering getting one for our RV. And so it was a big consideration for us to just putting a composting toilet in our cabin as well. Now, composting toilets can be affordable or they can be expensive depending on the type of toilet that you want. I have seen it where it has been super cheap and people are just going to the bathroom in a bucket and using sawdust and then disposing of that as it gets full. And then the composting toilets can run into a minimum of like a thousand dollars and even higher depending on a quality of one that you want. And so really for us, 
I think the drawback was we could have done a composting toilet, but it was still getting rid of the waste. Where are we gonna get rid of the waste at? We could have handled that. I believe we could have found a place on the property for us to get rid of the waste. But then we considered our guests and we thought, you know, if we have guests to stay here for a week or three or four days, depending on how many people are here, those composting toilets can fill up pretty quickly, especially the separators who separate number one from number two, which is what we were considering. You know, you're gonna have to empty those quite often, especially when you go number one, because it's only like a two gallon holding tank. And so we thought, do we really want our guests and us to have to do that on a consistent basis? Or even our cleaners, whenever they come, do we really want them to have to deal with that? And our answer was no, we really didn't want them to have to deal with it. And so honestly, the next and third and the last option is just your traditional septic and lateral lines, which is what we went with. So what I did was I just put in a 500 gallon septic tank. Now, because this is just a vacation home or it's just gonna be temporarily used, a 500 gallon tank is more than sufficient for what our needs would be. But Jerry had his trencher. He dug us out a hole behind the bathroom area. We put the 500 gallon tank down into the ground. Then we began to run the perforated lateral lines throughout the property. We had really good soil to do this. That is one thing that you want to take into consideration is your soil, where are you going to be placing it at? Also your water source, if you have a spring or a well near you, you need to make sure that you have um, an ample amount of space between the two to make sure that you never pollute your water source. I've had a lot of people ask us about inspections or if we're required to have any types of permits at all. And the answer to that is no. The only thing though that our county requires is if you have less than three acres, then you do have to have a perk test done on your soil and you have to put in a certified septic system based upon the county specs. If you're unaware, we have 50 acres, which means I did not have to get any type of permit or inspection for our septic system. I could put in whatever type of system that I wanted to put in. So we put in about 150 to 200 feet of perforated lateral lines. It zigzagged back and forth below our cabin. We also filled it with clean creek rock and that's just to help it absorb in through the soil better. And it also helps keep a lot of the dirt and debris from falling in and clogging up your lateral lines. Here's a little bit we're gonna put in the toilet that I bought. And we were just kind of discussing that. I didn't buy anything fancy. I didn't see no need in it. If this is a Tuscany is the brand name. What I was really looking for was this right here, this 1.06 gallons per flush. I really didn't want or wasn't really caring if I got a dual flush, but what I was looking for was this smaller amount on the gallon per flush because of us being off grid, I want to use less water. Uh, also, I have a smaller septic tank, which is a 500 gallon. I was just looking for something that would use minimal water as possible. And this is what I found that was the cheapest because this one was, I think, $90 as opposed to some of the other ones that were two to $300. And I just didn't see no need in spending a lot of money on a toilet. But I don't know much about toilets. I don't even know what the difference between a $100 toilet and a $300 toilet is. But we're going to open this. Yeah, two hundred dollars. Because <laughs> they all look the same, like the same height, same. I mean, this one's, this one had all the stuff that the three hundred dollar one had. Uh, powerful flush, which is what I was looking for. I was looking for a taller seat height, and sixteen and a half was, was all the height that they offered out of all the toilets I seen. And the elongated bowl, which is what I like, instead of just a circular or a round one, I didn't really care for that. And it also had the uh, slow close. So it had everything I needed and the price I got. I, I will say the only thing I don't really care about these dual flushes is the, uh, the button to flush them is up on top. I kind of like the uh, little handle that you flush in a traditional toilet right there versus pushing a button on top. But that's just me. Oozer down there. I'm sure I like that term when you're talking toilets. <laughs> Ooze. <laughs> 
So we just went with the old fashioned toilet and I'm really happy that we did. I feel like that it's gonna be the best decision for us as a family and also for our guests because it's worry free system. We don't have to worry about it while we're away. Our cleaners don't have to worry about it other than cleaning the toilet and our guests don't have to worry about it. So those are the three options when it comes to choosing waste management for an off-grid cabin. And let me know what you guys think about our choice. Do you think it was the right choice? Do you think we should have went with something else? Uh, what would you use if you were building an off-grid cabin of those three options? Which one would you pick? Now everybody's situation is different, but if it's just a husband and wife who have an off-grid cabin out in the woods, maybe a composting toilet or an outhouse would be perfectly fine. But for a large family and for the use that we have this cabin for, we believe this is the, the best option for us. So guys, we thank you so much for watching today's video. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and God bless.